The Eagles. Is this the second or third movie? Is this two or three? Oh, it's three, is it? Is this three? Yeah. It's three. There you go. It's that easy to be confused. I really came back to do pickups, and I shot pretty much every day, either on first or second unit, doing action sequences and stuff that was linking the character and the stories. I have a great sequence hanging upside down from a giant bat. Your head height is about the same height as the orcs, and you've got your knives and you're slicing, slicing them as, you, as, as this thing's kind of going crazy through, through the orcs, you know? Peter walked in one day and explained how Orlando was going to be hanging upside down under this bat and he was going to shoot orcs. Rather than the bow, though, we'll do the knives, so, you know, which will look bloody fantastic. Brilliant. I personally thought that him hanging upside down from a bat was kind of the dumbest idea I'd, I'd, I'd ever, ever, ever heard of in the entire six films. And I was just, oh, God, this is going to look so stupid. Hey, uh, Christian, keep, keep that in there just so you've got an inspiration. Uh, this is a moment for my 13-year-old son. Flynn, when you were 13, you would love this. We started off him hanging on some makeshift rings that was going to simulate the claw of the bat. Even out and pull the left. And now to your right, yeah, see something to your right, yeah, you're gonna fly down there. So I'm sort of like hang gliding and seeing battle below. Cool, now, yeah, let's try and swim those knees up. It was actually quite physical for Orlando. He had to pull himself up, kind of do a flip. I could probably do that. So the next thing you know, we're calling our riggers in. We're going to have to put this guy in a harness. This is why I have a T-shirt saying, I do all my own stunts. <laughs> and then, of course, it's Orlando, and he pulls his blades out and just <laughs> And he's actually twirling them in his hands while he's upside down. And it was the first take, I was like, oh, OK, OK, maybe this doesn't suck. <laughs> Being wired and hung upside down, the blood rushes to your head. You're, like, making fight moves and connection points, thinking, OK, well, there's an orc coming in here. You know, it was insane. OK, cool, come there. Just look, yeah. I, I think you've got it. Yeah, just, yeah, just, yeah, just a little yeah, bit just a little cool yeah. OK, cool. I think that's cool. Pete put it in the film, and, you know, I'm so happy that he did. I was wrong. The audience loved it. That's one of those moments when, as an actor, you go to the cinema and you think back on what you did and you see the magic that the visual effects guys have created, and you're like, wow. I had no idea it was going to be that cool. Here we are today doing the sequence between Bolg and Tariel. She puts up a really good fight with some orcs and with Bolg, but she gets knocked around quite a bit. It's actually more scary if, bang, another one, bang, another one. You know, it's like kind of this, it's more relentless. <laughs> from the sweat. You feel how sticky they are. <laughs> oh, my God. I have melting ears. I've, I'm sweating them off in all of my stunt work. Evangeline was good enough, and she'd rehearsed and were confident in her ability enough that she did all the fighting during that scene. <laughs> you like beating up the boys, I don't do. you? <laughs> yeah, all right, OK, let's shoot with you. Stand by and action. There was one kind of major mishap with the stunts, um, and it was my fault completely. Somewhere around Orc 4, I think, there's a moment where Tauriel was supposed to sort of evade a blow to her head. She ducks it, and there's an Orc's fist coming at her head at full force. You're coming in, and suddenly you've got a duck. It's like, you know, it's like, <laughs> Whoa! Yeah, 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 it's going to be cool. And of course, one take, I forgot the duck. <laughs> His fist went straight into my head at full speed. <laughs> and I almost KO'd. I was seeing stars, and I was starting to kind of swoon. And Peter's calling from the tent. Are you good, Eileen? Woo! Oh, God. I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Let's, let's just go again. Let's just go again. Let's just get going. And I just remember thinking, oh, my God, you cannot pass out. There will be so much shit to pay if you pass out. <laughs> you have to stay on your feet. Yeah. From then on, of course, the great thing was, you know, all the stunt guys were, like, giving me high fives and patting my back, and they were like, OK, you're one of us now. You, you took a hit for the team. 
One of the scariest, you know, gut-wrenching days for me was the stunt fight component of the battle between Bolg and Tauria. I mean, that, that was the first time I'd done stunts that big. Smashes her head into here. Evil. Yeah, OK, bang. But then he picks her up. Picks her up and then throws, yeah, throws her. Throws her which knocks her out. Oh, yeah. We're actually designing a fight for an elf to potentially lose. We've never had an elf lose a fight before. And that was done by my incredible stunt double, Ingrid. We've been rehearsing this scene probably for about a week, a week and a half now, and they've devised this system that kind of slams me into the wall but catches me at the very last second. So I, I slam into the wall, but I don't slam through the wall. And three, two, one, action! That's just one of those moments when your first instinct is, oh, shit. Ingrid, are you all right? All of us on stage were completely silent. Yeah. Come down, honey. Yeah. OK. <laughs> I personally thought that she broke her back. Same Go again. Go and have a look at me. Was... <laughs> the smashing against the walls, it hurts a little. Yeah. Action! When you know you're going to get hit a certain way or you land a certain way, you can put your um, personal protective gear on. Unfortunately, with the elves, they have very slim costumes. Quite streamlined, quite sleek, quite corseted. There's not a lot of room under there for padding. So this is the balm. It's this crazy gel stuff that was actually invented for figure skaters. And it has saved my spine so many times. And this, whilst being Elbow protection also doubles as chicken fillets for the weekend. But I learned very quickly, you don't do too many of those takes. You are always running, just with the human body, and people get tired. And cut. Yep. She put her life and limit risk, because that was a pretty dangerous stunt. That's how we roll. I'm not here for the kudos. Aren't you? Yeah, I am, <laughs> I love this set because it smells like it smells like Canada. Pine trees. All right, thank you. Here we go. Steady comes ready. Let's bring Orlando. Thank you very much, sir. My last scene that I shot would have been the scene with Orlando Bloom where we're walking through the wreckage of Lake Town. These orcs were different from the others. They bore a mark I have not seen for a long time. The mark of Gundabad. Gundabad. Today being my last day on set, Team Evangeline is wearing the official Team Evangeline sweatshirts um, with the official Team Evangeline logo on the back. Team Evangeline, leave the self-absorption to me. <laughs> it was a running joke that, you know, it's all about me, guys. It's all about me because on a film set, you've got all these really fantastic, experienced people who are running around and doing things like tying up your corsets. And it's just such a ridiculous thing that I had to make fun of it all the time. And so my team was walking around set that day with these sweatshirts on, and everyone thought that my team had made these sweaters to make fun of me. <laughs> and then they were like, no, no, she made them to make fun of herself. No, no, I think it's awesome. <laughs> It's great. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, it's she can cool. take the percent of herself. <laughs> yeah, I love, I love people like that. Yeah. <laughs> I ride north. Will you come with me? To where? To Gundabad. All right, let's go. Thank you very much, guys. And it is Evangeline's last shot on the hobby. <laughs> So once I wrapped, me and my team, we corked some champagne, and then I was called over to um, the unit where Peter was working. Oh, what's this? Uh, oh. I, can, I can hold that. Thank you. Good. Should I open it? <laughs> <laughs> this better be what I hope it is. It's uh, a ribbon. ribbon. It's a ribbon. <laughs> <laughs> Not this. Ooh, it is. <laughs> uh. They gave me a pair of Tauriel's pants, which I have worn out to the club since. They're really great on my ass. <laughs> Fantastic. They were really sexy. <laughs>
and they gave me a set of Tauriel's daggers. Oh, you know what? Yeah. You know what's so great about this? Mm -hmm. Is um, last time I left, yes. and you guys didn't give me a pair of these. Yeah. I just stole a pair. Yeah. I thought, well, I should have a pair, shouldn't I? <laughs> so now I have my oh, very wow. own wow. real oh, pair. Real. These are yeah. metal. Yeah. They're metal, yeah. I've never seen a metal pair. <laughs> no. This is brand new. Watch out, Peter. Watch out. Have yeah. champagne. <laughs> <laughs> It's been a long time since I found a place where I felt like I could express myself and be the best version of myself. And in New Zealand, I've found that. Yay, Evangeline! Oh, one, two, three! Team Evangeline! Woo! <laughs> this, is, this is all a gag. This is the last day. What can we get him to do on the last day? <laughs> Give us a version of it, like you're leaping high in the air, right foot, yep, and then, OK, and now then let's have off. a look. Oh, fuck! <laughs> we told you not, not to bite. <laughs> <laughs> We're making me look beautiful to kill Bull. It's been a long time coming. He's finally going to get it. Don't stab yourself. Oh, look at that. Dead on. I believe that was my last shot, like stabbing his pea brain, as Pete called it. <laughs> That's good. That was a good stab. And he goes, okay, we're going to get this again. Okay. You know what I mean? Just yeah, yeah, yeah. Different. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Anyway, we'll just yeah, line the, up. The coup de grace. Yeah. There's a couple of gags I wanted to play in Orlando. One is um, is that Lord of the Rings Fellowship theme that Howard Shaw composed, such a great theme. You, you want the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, thanks, guys. Thank you much. Shoot. And I secretly asked the sound department to cue up that fellowship theme. Didn't tell Orlando. And they were trying to find it because nobody had it. <laughs> Couldn't believe it. It says Peter and Fran and basically the whole crew of the Lord of the Rings and nobody had the f***ing track. Where's the actual soundtrack? Can you not, can you not actually... The Lord of the Rings? Oh, the Lord of the Rings fellowship. Maybe it's not on iTunes. Hang on a second. We just got an issue there. Hang on. I think Orlando was wondering what the hell's going on back there because we're all like, oh, you know, we, we, you know. Go to the Lord of the Rings. This guy right here, 85 people right now on double time waiting for this guy to find a fucking song. <laughs> and it was hilarious because we had to find it on YouTube. The you, you get between those to go on the three, two, one. Does he go on the three, two, one? Good. He goes on the two. He goes on the two. All right, you guys take it. Okay. Hey, my guy. Three, two, one. Hey. <laughs> go, go on, go. And I think he really got into it because he just about drove the knife into the head and twisted it and moved all with the beat of the music. It was a little heartbreaking to have the music and have that whole thing go on like that. It's kind of cool. Thank you very much. That's why we had to wait, because we were furiously downloading it off of um, the Nick. Oh, it was great, wasn't it? <laughs> Memories come flooding back. Oh, so that's, uh, that's Orlando's last shot, guys. Last shot as Legolas. Yay! I got old crest on rap. No! Yes. Do I get the beast? Oh. Ah. The steely! <laughs> I got old crest and I got my quiver, no. which was very cool. No! <laughs> my yes. quiver! Oh, God, love you. Thank no, you so, so much. much. Coming back to New Zealand, it's interesting because I've had this amazing journey in since this, this whole thing started and some of you are here when we were 10 years younger 14 years younger and the thing that's always struck me is just the spirit of New Zealand the people all of you guys it's sort of something that um, I'm so grateful to have been able to come back and experience again and I hope it will stand me through for the next 15 20 years or hopefully more because the genuine truth and reality of all you people is just something that the rest of the world only gets to experience mostly through watching Lord of the Rings or The Hobbit. And that's great. Thanks to you, Pete. Oh, I love you all. Thank you so much. Eh?
Courtesy of Orlando, there's some beers for everybody somewhere around here in yeah. a Monster Burger King. Yeah, beers. It was something that Vigo used to do, actually. Vigo was very good at buying beers and making sure that, you know, you show your appreciation, so I certainly took that from him. I mean, do it kind of, I mean, you can do, okay. each time Let's I do it, it you Let's can do, do something it. a bit different, okay. I remember on Orlando's last day, Pete doing um, the, the taking the hobbits to Isengard thing. They're taking the hobbits to Isengard! Saruman. One of the things that came out of Lord of the Rings and Legolas was this spoof online of me taking the hobbits to Isengard, and somebody had done, like, this, really cheesy, funny music, and then cut me in and out. Taking the twice and God, 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 God. And so we just decided to do like a little continuation of that with him joining in with the edited piece. Do eyes and God, do eyes and God, do eyes and God. Eyes and God, 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 God. I think the beers had already came out by the time we were filming that. The hobbits, 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 which is kind of ironic and kind of cool, really. Oh, yeah. oh Jesus, it's been filmed most of the way to start of the day, yeah. is it? <laughs> oh. As we got towards the end of the shoot, some days very ambitious targets were set for what we could achieve. It's going to take place here. Like the day that we were to shoot both the Bilbo Thorin reconciliation scene, along with Gandalf and Bilbo's final scene, just the two of them. And that day stretched on and on as we attempted to achieve both of those things. The final moments of Thorin's life, that's one of the scenes that you think about from the minute I went in to meet Peter with a potential to play this role, because it was very moving to me when I read the book. It's a very slight rewrite on the scene that, as it exists in the book. We moved it from Dale to a more personal place, which is on the battlefield, so that the two characters, it was just them, and also that Bilbo could hold on to the notion that maybe he could save him. I remember the day we shot it, and I, I just asked if I could just lay on the ground, and I didn't want anyone to come in and touch me and do makeup checks, and, and they did. They left me there on the ground. We lay Richard down and dressed the snow right up to him. And the last thing I did was put a big pool of blood coming out from underneath him. And it was just one of those scenes where you step back and you look at the monitor and you feel really content. It looked like a painting. It was kind of spiritual. I just lay there and looked at the roof of the soundstage and listened to all the sounds. It was one of those scenes where people are quite hushed around it, you know what I mean? Because it was two and a half years, whatever, after we started shooting. It's the end of this character's journey. So that was, yeah, it was kind of given some weight, I think, on the set. We won't thrash the wide shot too much. We'll just do, you know, half dozen takes, give you guys a chance to experiment a bit. Yeah. Ultimately, I think that they wanted it to to feel as real as possible so that he didn't have time. Boom, boom. Lie still. Don't, <clears throat> don't move. <clears throat> I'm glad you're here. <laughs> when characters don't have time to say what they need to say, that creates great drama. You're not going anywhere. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? You are going to live. <clears throat> I take back <clears throat> my word and my deeds at the gate. <clears throat> it was kind of the culmination of their very rocky friendship, you know. They'd really been up and down the, the mountain with each other, you know, and figuratively and literally. The most difficult words for Thorin to say to Bilbo were, I'm sorry that I've led you into such peril. It took me right back to the very first scene that I shot with him in Bag End and the disdain with which Thorin held the Hobbit, yet their whole success has rested on the seemingly insignificant person, which is what I think Tolkien is writing about. I think it's the whole reason Tolkien wrote these books. It's his need to express that the simplest single person can somehow affect 
big change. And I think that that's captured in that one moment when Thorin apologizes and says thank you to him. You did what only a tr true friend would do. Forgive me. I was too blind to see it. I am so sorry that I've led you to such peril. I remember on the beginning of the day saying to the sound guys, please just get this. <laughs> lie still, lie still. Lie still. Don't move. Don't move. <laughs> that fine, trembling sensitivity that the voice has in those very emotional moments would have been almost impossible to replicate after the fact. I'm glad to have shared in your barrels, Thorin. <laughs> Each and every one of them. It is far more than any backings deserves. That's the point that you know that you're going to end in good terms, and when he gives it to you, you can kind of relax and fade away in that last week of it. Is that...? Yeah. OK. Will you forgive me before I die? I think that's really the peak of Thorin's journey. Phil. Not the book. So go back to your books. And your armchair. Plant your trees. Watch them grow. If more people valued arm above gold, the world would be a merrier place. No, 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 no. Thorin. 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 Just one more moment. Just wait one more moment. The eagles are here, Thorin. Hmm? Hmm? The e I made a little wooden cross uh, to mark the place where we shot the scene, and over the course of the day, um, some people have laid tributes, which I think yeah, you should take a look at. This is the grave of Thorin Oakershield, who is also now known as Thoza. Um, there's been some really nice flowers made with some uh, cable ties, and I don't know what this is made of, but it, but it says R.A.P. Thorin. And by the end of the day, people had come and laid little things, little tributes uh, on the cross, which I found very moving. But that's the Kiwi way. <laughs> anyway, that's that. Okay. There's an important little scene where Bilbo and Gandalf have to reunite, and uh, we didn't have much time to film it, because it was a shot at the very end of a day, and a long day. It was Ian McKinnon's very last day. He was literally booked on a plane back to England the following day. And as it was, by the time we knocked on his door to get him to come to see it, it was like 11 o'clock at night. Everyone was exhausted. We'd been filming since 7 in the morning, and quite honestly, everyone wanted to get home. But we also wanted to make a good thing of this last scene. Originally, that scene had dialogue in it, and, you know, it was a lot longer. Oh, we got on set and we looked at the pages of this dialogue that Philip and Fran had written. Not bad dialogue, but the three of us were talking, and somehow, collectively, it was, well... We, we don't have much time. Do we really want to say all these words? And then Ian says, oh, there won't be anything more powerful than silence. I don't think there should be uh, much comfort in this. Um, no, no, this no, is no, no, there are no words to say because there are no, no words to say. No, no, no. no, 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 no. Oh, oh, it'll be all right, son, isn't it? Yeah, no, yeah. no. Yeah, it's not. I think it's yeah. yeah. almost stone-based people. Yeah. Yes. How do you sum up? what's just happened and who we've just lost in a great one-liner or whatever between me and Gandalf. I think that might be all right if I'm looking at you. Oh. Mm -hmm. But you're in your own. I think the less we do, the better. And so we just shot the scene without any words being spoken, because for them it's all about the emotion. Yeah. yeah. You know what this is the, um, the finish of? The, the, it's back in Bag End at the beginning where um, Bilbo says, uh, can you promise me that I'll come back? Yeah. And you say... No. And if you do, you will not be the same. 
It's one of my favorite scenes to do, and it's one of my favorite scenes uh, in the film because of its uh, lack of words, actually. Sometimes some of the best written scenes don't have dialogue in, you know what I mean? And it's still, that's good writing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it's economical writing. Mm. That's nice. That's nice. It's still on. That's good. Mm. Suddenly, out of the very quiet scene that's just sitting there, uh, we were aware that the studio was, was full of people who were waiting to say well done and, and goodbye, really. Everybody wanted to be there. I mean, everyone wanted to be there for his last take as Gandalf. I felt like I, I wanted to be there just to see it because you might never put that hat on again. I remember thinking about it at the time that this is it for one of the most well-known sort of characters in movie history, really. This is not just the last time Gandalf is doing a scene in The Hobbit, it's the last time he'll, he'll be in Middle Earth. So it was a hu huge thing. This is honestly the last of these films. <laughs> <laughs> With me in it, anyway. Yes. No, 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 no. It is the end of a long journey which began for me in uh, last century, 1999. Ian was the iconic Tolkien character, Gandalf, the wizard, the, the hat and the robes. He's the icon of these movies. So to see him shoot his last shot wearing that costume and wearing that beard and hair and to know that he was never, ever going to be seen in that costume again, you can't help but find those days very, very powerful. OK, now here we go, Ian. This is your last take as Gandalf. Action. Filming these films has been a huge part of my life because of the friends I've made and the distances I've traveled and the time I've spent. It's so powerful that you can't actually put words to it. I mean, what can you say that really adds up, you know, 13 years of experience? Good and bad and funny and sad and, I mean, you know, you can't. I mean, you just can't. <laughs> And it's something that he knows what that was like. I know what it was like. A lot of the crew know what it was like. And, and that's how it will always remain, just as a, as a life experience for us that can't really be put into words. Okay, so let's give you a big round of applause, everybody. When I'd finally finished, uh, there was a moment of recognition and celebration and uh, relief uh, mingled with uh, regret that it was over. But mission accomplished. Uh, yep. Right. Over the pipe. Otherwise, I'll be selling them. <laughs> it, it isn't just the, oh, no more Gandalf for me. It's saying goodbye to all those colleagues. I don't feel I've said goodbye to, to Gandalf because uh, I'm constantly being reminded by people who've enjoyed the films that uh, Gandalf is alive and well, although 
quite where he is at the moment, I don't know. <laughs> Up to mischief somewhere.